Is this thing on? Welcome back to Big Mouth and fancy seeing you here in June. A very welcome, my friends, and especially my enemies. Come in, sit down, no touching. I don't do the touching. Are you feeling charitable? Then smash the subscribe button and the like button. And please do follow me on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. These Ryan Reynolds, Green Lantern, Zack Snyder, Justice League rumours just will not go away. Now, there are very strong rumours today that this is a thing. Now, the person perpetuating these rumours, of course, is our very own Grace Randolph. Now, Grace Randolph, I have a lot of opinions about her. I don't want to go into it. It's not worth it. You know she's blocked me ages ago. But... She does claim she's verified this from another source. Now, if that's Daniel RPK, the very guy who denied her while she was having a, a spat with Kathy Yang, the director of Birds of Prey, there is a problem. But we shall see. John Aaron Garza, Davey Pienaar believe this is a fact. These two have got Zach's ear as well. So if anyone's going to know, it's Zach, seeing he directed the picture. Now, what we don't know here is, was this done when he originally shot the picture? Now, let's be clear here. It's looking like not a big kind of something we're going to see him a lot in. I think it looks like he could appear in the history lesson. Now, to anyone who doesn't understand the Zack Snyder's Justice League history lesson, if you've ever seen Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Ring, with the narration and all the historical stuff that happened, this is what Zack did. In Zack Snyder's Justice League. This is the beautiful moment we're going to see with Junkie XL's compelling music. Not that little bit we saw in Justice League. So in that in that in the theatrical cut, we did see a Green Lantern, but if you blinked, you would have missed it. So it looks like, and I can't corrob corroborate this these rumors, but it these are very strong rumors by people that I kind of trust if you want. I more trust them than I don't trust them. But who knows, right? And so it's looking like he's coming in as Hal Jordan in the Snyderverse. Of course, with the multiverse happening, with DC Films going into the multiverse and launching this multiverse via Wonder Woman 84, which we're going to talk about very shortly because... That is very, very important to this strategy um, that AT&T and Warner Media, Walter Hamada and Jim Lee are attempting to do, really ambitious. But, so Hal Jordan, aka Ryan Reynolds, could have another chance at another movie. You're saying, Mick, what about Deadpool? I told you exclusively, weeks and weeks ago, that Deadpool 3 and Ryan Reynolds are dead. It's not going to happen. Ryan is alive and kicking, of course. I don't mean he's dead. You know, Superman forbid. But I said for a long time that they would recast Deadpool. Why am I saying this? Fake hates big personalities. I'm surprised he's working with Sam Raimi, but he had no choice if he wanted Tobey Maguire involved in the MCU. So he had to bring him in anyway. But normally he doesn't like big personalities or people having opinions of opinions that are not his own creatively. And I think that they've been swaying back and forth. You know, Ryan wanted an R-rated Deadpool movie. The Disney strategy isn't about that, isn't about adults. It's about the family audience. They believe that's where the most money and box office is and for repeat viewings. And that's what they're going to stick by. This, The very man Walt Disney, this is what he wanted. And they want to stick to that. So... And that's a problem for Deadpool. It's not only a problem for Deadpool, of course. It's also a problem for Wolverine. If you've ever read Wolverine in, in the graphic novels over at Marvel, you would know that this man is a brute. He's an animal. He's a butcher, right? And not even in the films with Hugh Jackman did they represent that. Enough. My brother-in-law loves Wolverine and he's told me all about him. And this is why I know about all of this. But this is a problem. I don't believe they're going to work together. I don't believe that Ryan Reynolds will ever appear as Deadpool again. And this is the opportunity AT&T are going to take advantage of. So we can get him back. So do I believe he's going to be in Zack Snyder's Justice League? Look, 
The rumours keep on coming up. People like Davy P9 and John Aaron Garza were doing gifts of Keaton's Bruce Wayne and Batman the other day before Umberto but Gonzalez broke the news. So they know stuff. There's no question about that. Um, so what does this say about um, Sam, what's his, I forgot what his name is, who, well, there were strong rumours he was playing Hal Jordan. It's clear he's playing a Green Lantern, just not Hal Jordan. We assumed he was playing Hal, but it looks like it's definitely Ryan Reynolds playing an older Hal Jordan in the history lesson. And with this multiverse initiative that's, you know, going on over at DC Films right now, and we've heard so many hints and rumours towards it already, he can come back. Anyone can come back. Now, it's obvious that this multiverse strategy has been in the development and planning for a very, very long time. And I'd say, if we remember Grace Randolph's assertion and claims, that Wonder Woman 84 would change the timeline. We thought this was a bad thing for the Snyderverse because obviously Zack Snyder's Justice League hadn't actually been announced yet. But of course, we didn't know the big multiverse plan. Now, as you all know, I saw a 90 minute test screening of Wonder Woman 1984. Sounds like 200 years ago now. I did not see anything that changes the timeline. But I saw this test screening before, before they went back to do reshoots. Now, don't forget, they delayed the release of this film in 2019. Do you understand what, what's going on here? They changed it, and Gal Gadot says we're going back to the original plan, or something along those lines. Don't sue me, Gal, if it wasn't, if they weren't your exact words. Now we know what Gal meant. They were, Gal must have known even then that Zack Snyder's Justice League was going to happen at HBO Max. They went back to integrate this timeline change. But the real timeline change and the splintering of the multiverses we are going to see in the Flashpoint movie. Now, how do I think this is going to work out? I think when Barry does, you know, initiate Flashpoint, I think the multiverses are going to splinter and make it possible for travel through the multiverses, right? There'll be some kind, look, there'll be some kind of, you know, story beat or story thread, or story tool, shall I say, that's going to allow them to do this. And that opens everything up. So, look, this is a very clever business initiative by AT&T, because this allows for anything. This is a company that believes the customer is always right, even if you don't think the customer is right. These are how successful companies operate. I remember when AT&T first purchased WB and I was hearing AT&T customers coming out going, oh, they're a terrible company. They took a week to come out and fix my telephone once or nonsense like that. Listen, tell someone who cares. That's how th those kind of businesses are run. Then we heard the criticism of the debt they've incurred to actually buy Warner Brothers. Well, it's an ambitious undertaking. Of course, they were going to be in debt. That's what business is all about. And this is why they're doing what they're doing. They will leave no stone unturned in every IP they own to make maximum dollar. And how do we make maximum dollar in business? As we all know, those of us who are in business, you have to please the consumer, the customer. Give the customer what they want. That doesn't mean we're going to have this messy multiverse where any everything bleeds through and there's no cohesion and there's no storytelling. And there's no character development. No. Fag has been playing this game for so long. Oh, this character's going to cross over with this one. Oh, you haven't seen the last of this character. He was doing it for years. Fag was always in the press talking. And something that's very suspicious right now is that Fag's not doing a lot of talking. Lockdown and the um, pandemic would have been a great time to talk to the fans. But he's not. Instead, Walter Hamada... And Jim Lee are taking this opportunity to be front and centre in the CBM war. And it is a war. It's Warner Brothers versus Disney. And now AT&T have bought this company and have got the, you know, the blood, sweat and tears and guts to do what has to be done. And, you know, pick 
up this potential of this IP that is DC and take it to the maximum level. You know, Ryan Reynolds, Michael Keaton, and what what else can potentially happen? Brandon Ralph's Superman, which is actually Christopher Reeve's Superman. The potential is limitless. And what about the Krypton TV show that was cancelled after two years? Could that be a film? Could that bleed through the multiverse as well? Don't forget David Goyer, who penned Man of Steel and Batman v Superman, was very integral to that TV show. Now, don't forget, we saw the real Doomsday on that show. And don't forget, Zach hinted at the Man of Steel viewing party that there was a Man of Steel, uh, sorry, there was a, a Doomsday on Krypton that kind of caused chaos and mayhem and maybe escaped from the planet, right? So it's all there. It's, it is all there. So this, as I say, nothing, nothing can, can be untouched here. Anything you want can happen. It could be something Jane down the road loves about DC, but you don't. Or it could be something that you love, but Jane down the road doesn't like. This is what the multiverse is. TV, TV shows and films commission. Bleeding through this multiverse, right? And anyone can cross over with anyone else. And waking up this morning to these Hal Jordan rumours, Ryan Reynolds rumours, part of me was, oh, not again. But there seems to be some truth in these rumours and nothing would excite me more for this guy to get his opportunity. Let me be clear. I love everything about the Green Lantern movie apart from the CGI costumes and that didn't bother me that much. I think personally, and I know you're going to laugh, I think Green Lantern is a great CBM. And I enjoyed it, and I thought the actors did really well. And there's some great actors in that movie. So it's really happening over at um, DC Film now. All of us, but this has been in the look. This has been in development for a very long time. This has been in development ever since they knew they had a problem after Justice League. How do we please everyone? How do we fix this, Walter? What's your suggestion, Jim? Conversations like this that I know went on for months and months. Should we, should we cancel the DCEU? Should we start again? No. Doesn't it make more sense, um, Jim? W what's your idea, Walter? The multiverse. We can have something, a bit of, some, a bit of everything, right? Something for everything. Let me say that again. I'm not getting my words out, am I? Let's have something for everyone. That's what I was looking for. Uh, yeah, let's have something for everyone. And then Jim pokes his ears out and says, oh, I'm interested in this. Yes, we can have this verse, that verse. We can tap into things that the DCEU hasn't tapped into before. And all of a sudden, you've got an excited consumer. But not just the Snyderverse fans, not just the hardcore comic book fans, the pace of the audience that they're desperate to tap into, that Marvel Studios tapped into since the first Avengers movie. The mainstream audience. Via the multiverse, you can do bright and light and bubbly and, you know, inspirational family movies for DC and nobody's going to care because the Snyderverse is going to be there and other element, Arrowverse is there and this verse is here and that verse is there. It is everywhere. Right. Something for everyone, as I struggled to say before. And this is what I said to you from the very beginning when Zack Snyder's Justice League was announced. HBO Max will have its DC stuff. It doesn't matter how many separate things they do. It doesn't matter what Earth you're a part of. You can cross over with anyone else. This is exciting for the fans, the actors involved, the creatives, the future creatives. And all of a sudden, DC films are an attractive prospect for all these fantastic filmmakers that Marvel Studio, Studios and Warner Brothers are vying for. Because that's part of the war. They're all competing to get the best people. All of a sudden, overnight, since the announcement of Zack Snyder's Justice League, our, our universes, this DC multiverse, is actually a very attractive proposition and nobody saw this coming apart from the people planning this. And this is genius. So, yes, I do believe the actual beginning of this is Wonder Woman 84 is key to all of this. And this is why they went back and they cancelled the release in 2019 because they wanted to initiate this. So don't be surprised 
if they went back and we see a Justice League character in Wonder Woman 84. Because this new era of the AT&T, Walter Hamada, Jim Lee, DC multiverse of movies is going to be about people pleasing. And the, as I've always said to you, what the comic book um, fans love, crossovers. It's what's made the MCU so successful that anyone, else, anyone can cross over with anyone else. They created this popular cinematic universe and they want to see Thor and they want to see the Hulk. You know, you know, Thor Rangarok is one of their most successful movies because the Hulk and Thor team up together. It's a brilliant movie. It's not Shakespeare. It's not The Godfather, but it works because there's a crossover between two characters that we love. And AT&T understand this is the best business initiative to do. And this is what they're going to do. So don't, don't underestimate Wonder Woman 1984 and definitely seeing maybe one or two characters crossing over. I don't know who. I don't know who. But this is what I suspect. What do you think? Comment down below. Like, share and subscribe. And I'll be back tomorrow with even more DC Daily, where I'll try and get my words out in a more cohesive fashion. See you again soon.